to our studio, and congratulations on your new position as House Majority Whip. <laughs> Thanks. It's great to be here with you. Not exactly a, an easy way to ease into office. The first thing you have to do is deal with this immigration bill. You tried to get something passed. It had to be pulled off the House floor at the last minute, but then at the end of this session, before the summer recess, or the, the fall recess, whatever you want to call it, um, you got a $700 million package passed. Tell us about that a little bit. Well, you know, they say immigration is probably the toughest issue to deal with, and we saw that firsthand. Uh, there's a reason why it's been nine years since the House has passed the border security bill, uh, because it's very complicated. But what we did was we got uh, all of our members involved in this process on the Republican side, and we put together a bill that got very broad support and actually addresses this crisis that we have at the border, and we passed it before we left town. And, and to contrast that, the Senate tried to take up a similar bill on their side, and they couldn't pass it, and they left town without getting the job done. And, we, and one of the things I said was, we can't leave town until we do our jobs. And we did. We passed a good bill that will solve this crisis at the border. And, and I'd like to see the Senate come back and take the bill up and, and pass it on to the president. And, and still, there are Democrats and there are pundits who say that this bill that you all passed is a sham, is, is a word that I've seen used a lot, and it's never going to become law. So how do you respond to that? Yeah, we've heard that before. In fact, uh, we had a bill a few months ago called the No Budget, No Pay Act. And the president issued a veto threat the day that we filed the bill, and Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid said that it was dead on arrival. Well, guess what? Just a few weeks later, that bill got signed into law. I think you're seeing a situation here where the country is screaming out, calling for action from Congress. And the House has now taken action. We led and we passed a bill. They'd like to see the president uh, do his job and go and secure the border, but he won't. Uh, but in the meantime, we said, for example, governors along the border states, if the president won't do his job, shouldn't they be able to call up the National Guard to secure the borders in their states? That's a very common sense idea. Governors have asked for that power along the border. We do that in our bill. And so I think when you look at the problem that we addressed, we put a solution on the table. It's time for the Senate to take that up. It's time for the president to get engaged in this crisis, too. Let's talk about something else. We can talk about this all day, but I want to get to a couple of other questions. Common Core, um, you, Governor Jindal has changed his tune on it. He wants it out of schools. Superintendent John White says we need to stick with this. There are lawsuits. People are saying he's overstepping his boundaries. How do you feel on this issue? I've always been a proponent of having education decisions made at the local level. Uh, I don't like the idea of some kind of federal curriculum. Uh, I'm all for higher standards. When I was in the state legislature, we, we actually promoted higher standards uh, with the LEAP test and some other things. We promote charter schools that have been very successful. Uh, I'd be very skeptical uh, if the federal government tried to get involved in creating curriculum. That's ultimately what this is about. And everybody says, you know, oh, don't worry, Common Core is not about a federal curriculum. As long as the federal government's not involved, let those decisions be made at the local level. All right, two quick answers. First, um, tell me what you can do for Louisiana as the House Majority Whip in 15 seconds. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I've got a seat at the leadership table now as the number three person in the House. I will be meeting every day with the Speaker and Majority Leader as we lay out the agenda for the House that day and for the week and the months ahead. Uh, so I'm going to continue to push the values that I was elected to, to represent, uh, being the member from Southeast Louisiana. My values haven't changed. In fact, I want to go and bring those values up to Washington and put those values at the leadership table to help get these problems our country's facing solved. And lastly, I have to get this question in from Twitter. I asked people to submit questions for you, and Heath wanted to know if green energy is a bigger part, can be a bigger part of our energy plan. How do you see that, and can we lessen our dependence on, on Middle East energy? I'm for an all of the above energy strategy, and that means wind, solar. It also means oil, natural gas, coal, nuclear power, everything that we have. Uh, right now, the federal government's blocking off a lot of the resources that we have. Uh, that means we're forced to get more of our energy from, from Middle Eastern countries that don't like us. We ought to green light, light the Keystone Pipeline. That would be 40,000 jobs uh, oil that we would be getting from Canada, who's a friend, that we don't need to get from Middle Eastern countries that don't like us. And that also would create jobs and help us pay down our debt. So uh, I think energy is going to continue to be a, a great issue that we need to promote all of the above. And Louisiana has been at the forefront. I'm going to continue to promote Louisiana's role in producing American energy. All right. Congressman Steve Scalise, House Majority Whip, thanks for the time and congratulations on the new position. Good luck. Appreciate it. Good to be here. <laughs> thanks. And